since we purchased the house, that one of the biggest things that's irritated me about the backyard is that half of it is raised up about four to five feet. Even though the yard is a reasonable size, because half of it is a different elevation, it kind of renders all that space unusable because the inconvenience of getting up there, especially with a lawnmower, patio furniture, is uh, not worth the level of effort of climbing five stairs. On top of that, the retaining wall put in by the previous owner was not installed correctly. There's no drainage to it. Therefore, all the water collects behind it, and then especially in the winter, it freezes and expands, pushing out the retaining wall. As you can see, this whole thing is bent by several degrees. It's actually sticking out by about a half inch to an inch here as well. On top of that, the cracks that were in the retaining wall, they just used some quick crete in a bottle to try to patch their mess. Now going down the wall, you can also see some areas where the top layer of the concrete has started to chip away. The cracks go all the way here to the end and it even bows out here on the side by quite a substantial amount. You can also see there's a lot of discoloration as we go down. Some of this was because of spray painting projects, but the majority of this where it's different shades of somewhere between black and gray, especially as you go down the wall that's because they never properly sealed or put any sort of a top coat on any of it so therefore it was just always exposed to the weather and then the different sections get different amounts of moisture different amount of sunlight things like that that causes this discoloration over time coming over to this other side again you can see the entire top edge is kind of worn off and this is the only drainage they put in was this one block with a couple holes in it the entire thing was filled with dirt again it's supposed to have a gravel backfill that allows the water to flow through so a less than stellar job obviously and again you're sticking out by about an inch here and this whole thing. I don't know how well this will show on the camera, but that whole section is bowed way out. Now, obviously to level this out, we're going to have to take off the retaining wall and offload pretty much all of this dirt. This is obviously a lot of dirt. We got about uh, 25 feet of depth and I think about 35 feet of length here, anywhere from four to five feet of height going down the entire width. That's just a large volume. On top of that, we don't know what's under this dirt. It could be a lot of rocks. It could be an actual ledge of rock underneath and rocks you can't really dig through. So that's really going to change the level of effort of how much we can remove. Just to start, what I did is I dug out the back of this retaining wall in two spots the first being right here and then the second spot being over here as you can see we kind of pulled some rocks out as well but for the most part there's not a whole lot that would prevent us from keeping going and uh, it doesn't seem like there's going to be too many rocks for us to not be able to do this project now on top of that this is the path that's around the back of the garage it's not really much wider over on the side and there's a fence there so you can't really get a backhoe or a, any sort of a tractor back here to offload any of this dirt it's going to have to be done manually i did talk to one of my friends who is a landscape architect architect and he talked about the best way to approach this and he said basically you cut out a section of the wall you can put the wheelbarrow straight in and then just load everything in right on top from any of the sides so that's what we're going to do today is i'm going to take out this section here because these final steps i didn't want to start below those because we'd have to go up them every single time with the wheelbarrow or we'd have to just ramp these off which we're not looking to do quite yet this is the farthest point over where we can still be above these steps but as close to our initial plan start location as we want it to be i'm going to be using a sledgehammer to crack it and then try to take this wall section down you'd also use a masonry bit or some sort of masonry cutting tools and then just notch it or drill down in several locations and the cracks would just form between those drill locations but hitting stuff is fun and this wall pissed me off so uh that's how we're gonna do it before we start i am gonna be wearing safety glasses i also have boots on even though there was shorts this is a horrible fashion statement to be making but um it is about 90 degrees out today it's the hottest day of this year so far and if anything falls i do want my toes to be protected so i do need the boots but enough talking let's get to swinging now, if you are using a cutting wheel or a masonry bit, you're going to do what I'm effectively doing here with the hammer, except with that bit instead. Now, I'm just incrementally making these small holes from the top to the bottom and trying to connect them together, and then collectively, it'll be enough to cut through it. Like I said, you can do this with a cutting wheel or a masonry bit. It's just going to take a lot longer to do it. Now, if you are using a sledgehammer like I am, these things are very heavy and really, really, really pace yourself when you're doing this. You can probably tell, but I get pretty tired pretty quickly doing this because I was just swinging for the fences on the first couple swings I really took away a lot of my energy and then as I continued on I just said okay you know I'm just gonna let the weight of the sledgehammer do its thing and exert as little energy as possible because I was pretty spent pretty early on so pace yourself really important especially on a hot day like this and also make sure to hydrate you'll see I stopped for a few different times to kind of catch my breath and take a couple sips of water but once you get enough of it chipped away you're pretty much ready to just pull it over and then you're done all right that first section's taken out. And you can uh, kind of see what I was talking about a little bit better now with how the moisture kind of collects here at the bottom and it expands as it freezes. Even now in the summertime, you can see this top sand's really dry and this has uh, quite a bit of moisture in it. It's much darker in tone. Whew, I'm gonna sit down and relax for a few minutes in the AC. I'm out of shape. 
Just for some validation that I'm not just complaining, it is about 90 degrees outside in the shade right now, so in the sun it's probably about 93 to 95. Several months later. It is now just about the end of the summer, and as you can tell, there is not really a whole lot of progress that has been made on this, and that is because of the 20-ish people, 25 people who have expressed interest in picking up the fill dirt precisely zero have actually showed up. Now I have taken out a few more bricks, that way I can help better block off the corners of this yard because the dogs kept escaping. And I tried to break these into smaller, more manageable pieces so that I can remove these when that time comes. But in order to get these moved, I had to find a backup plan because clearly no one was willing to take them. And if you go through a waste disposal service, the town will not take dirt and most other places charge by the pound for waste removed. So to remove all this concrete and all the dirt in the yard, it would have been something like $20,000 to level this out. Obviously paying $20,000 thousand dollars to offload dirt is not something I can really afford or would even want to afford. I had to come up with a backup plan and this is what I thought of. In all of its glory here is a trailer that I purchased for $250. As you can see it's got a little surface rust but everything is structurally sound. This was sort of bolted on when I picked it up and then it proceeded to fall off on the ride home about a half mile from my house. This decking is not very good condition as you can tell. The bolts are fine obviously but I'm worried about the wood ripping through and this toolbox if you will is not exactly in good condition but for a trailer that is going to be loading up rocks and dirt it is completely fine before we load all of this onto the trailer though these will obviously not fit on that complete lack of decking that we have so we do need to replace the decking i also want to put some shallow sidewalls that way when this is on the highway or whatever getting transported it's not going to all blow out and completely ruin other people's vehicles i really don't want to be that guy so to begin i'm going to strip down the current decking i'm going to put new decking on and then I'm going to do some other small modifications to make the trailer a little more user friendly so that I'm not ruining my back every time I go to unload this. I'm going to do a separate video for all those trailer modifications. I will link that in the description below.